praising God and thanking him for the chance to, once again, God willing, speak his word accurately. Please, Lord. In this chapter, Jeremiah 45, that we want to call All Places, understanding the promise that God is about to make to Baruch, the secretary who is writing down the words of Jeremiah. We've already seen it, but now we're going to get a chance to see that as a part of Baruch writing down the words of Jeremiah and not just writing them down, becoming his emissary or his envoy in a time when Jeremiah's movement was restricted. God is going to give him a special blessing in all places, starting out in the first verse, saying that these are the words that came to Jeremiah for Baruch in the fourth year of King Jehoiakim when Baruch was writing down all the words that God had given to Jeremiah. He is going to seemingly see into Baruch's heart, even if these are not words that Baruch is actually saying. He's going to say to Baruch, sorry, he is going to say to Baruch, you say, woe is me and I find no rest. However, you are looking for rest in a place where you should not get comfortable. Why? Because God is bringing, sorry, bringing disaster to all flesh. However, he will give you your life as a prize of war in all places to which you may go. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's a lot because it reminds us of what we saw and the promise that he made to the Rechabites that they would always have a man standing before him in what I called a reward for their integrity. And likewise, Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian that initiated uh, the efforts to save Jeremiah from the cistern he had been cast into to die, was given his life as a prize of war, which can be easy to overlook when you're in the midst of your distress and despair about not being able to get established the way that you'd like to in life when you realize that if the rest of the remnant had promises this strong, their fears might not have driven them to Egypt, where they were able to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. God, once again, reminding them to stay in the pocket, no matter how dangerous it seemed. Victory was in the pocket. They found failure chasing after the fruit or the results of their own reasoning, which may remind us why God is not simply handing these promises out at random, understanding that while the remnant or the majority of the remnant decided to pursue what seemed to be in their own best interest. Baruch put his own best interest aside, not only to record the words that God gave to Jeremiah, but to put his own safety and his opportunity at stability at risk to take on the same dangerous work that had gotten Jeremiah locked up, or at least his movement restricted. Ultimately, as we saw, putting both of their lives at risk. Likewise, Ebed Melech, after Jeremiah had been given over to death, went against his own best interest to step up for someone who had already been condemned to death, saving a man when it was in his own best interest to just kind of sit on the sidelines and let things play out. And then likewise, the Rechabites, when all they had to do was whatever they wanted to do, they embraced a life that just seemed flat out a lot more bland, but it was consistent with both the wisdom of those guiding them and the future that God had carved out for them, the successful future that God had ahead for them. Both of those components, the wisdom of the council and the blessing on that council from God being essential to the success, I guess, of their future, reminding us that in each of these circumstances, none of these people were a conventional fit within Israel. The Rechabites dwelling in tents when everybody else had a stable inheritance. Ethiopian or Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, not even a natural born citizen of Israel. And then likewise, now we see Baruch seemingly frustrated at his inability to get established in a place that God was about to shake up. Understanding that there are times in life when God can be giving us an assignment where the truth is right in front of our face. He's literally writing the prophecy that he is about to shake this place up, but our desire for peace and rest can be so great that we don't realize that our plans are completely inconsistent with what God is trying to get us to see is shifting and changing right in front of us. And so those who feel the frustration of the apparent inability to get roots established somewhere reminds me of why we sometimes say God's best to you as you go forward in him, understanding that to the degree you are sacrificing for God, 
My prayer is for something better for you, his protection in all places to which you may.